I want to look with you now at how faith gives us courage. For more than ever over the last couple of years, it struck me how full of fears and anxieties people seem now. You pick up the newspaper or turn on the television and there's a feast of things to worry about thrown at you. Wars, pandemics, politics, recession, social unrest. And then through the day we fear offending people. We fear what's going to happen to our loved ones. We worry and worry. And yet, do you know what the most frequent command in Scripture is? Do not be afraid. So we're going to look now at how faith gives courage. For you know, faith is, it expresses itself in one way in courage. Courage is a mark of faith. We often think of courage as simply a characteristic that some sturdy folk are born with. But while some people are more temperamentally thick-skinned than others, true courage is a gift given through the gospel to ordinary, naturally nervous, timid Christians. It's something extraordinary, inexplicable to the world, a supernatural marker of faith that makes believers stand out. Now, we don't often talk about courage anymore as Christians, but C.S. Lewis wrote, Courage is not simply one of the virtues, it is the form of every virtue at the testing point. In other words, courage is love at the testing point, when it's become hard to love. Courage is patience at the testing point, when we are fed up. Courage is peace at the testing point, when we're angry or disdainful. It is resilience in Christ-like faithfulness. Being courageous is being like Christ, who is able to be simultaneously lamb-like and lion-like. So I want to ask, where does this courage come from? We don't enjoy being anxious. So how can we grow in this fearlessness? How can we become more lion-hearted instead of chicken-hearted? Well, would you turn with me to Psalm 27, where David, surrounded by troubles, gives the answer to our worries. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the foundation for fearlessness. Without him, we're in darkness. And darkness is always a place where fears abound. But he is our light. He scatters the darkness of our ignorance our superstition, our idolatry, our sin. His grace drives out our gloomy worries that he's against us. His authority drives out our fear of chaos. Our light is found, not in understanding exactly why we're going through our struggles. Our light is found in him who orders all things. Our stronghold is found not in our ability to manage our lives or in someone else to manage for us. The Lord is our light, our salvation, our stronghold. Now, when David writes that, he's not writing with the breezy nonchalance, calmness of someone for whom everything's easy. Verse 2, evildoers assail him. He's surrounded by enemies and foes and troubles and worries. But experience has taught him that ultimately those foes will stumble and fall. The Lord will remain his stronghold. 
experience for the believer breeds hope and confidence. You know, it is so much harder for a young Christian for whom the Lord's goodness and constancy can seem theoretical, just an idea. Because the young Christian has come to trust the Lord, but they've not walked with him for long. They've not seen how he guides and blesses and answers prayer. For myself, it is walking with the Lord, especially through challenges, that has swelled my confidence in him. I lead the ministry of union, partnering with Sarang for the reformation of Christ's church worldwide. Now, this is a humanly impossible vision we have to raise leaders and help them plant healthy churches around the world. Who are we to do that? And yet, time and again, I've seen the Lord's miraculous provision. From humble beginnings in Wales, the Lord has done the impossible, raising hundreds and hundreds of faithful leaders in many countries and providing the books and the money and all they need to plant out churches which are growing from the United States to Poland, from Chile to Greece. And through seeing the Lord's very real and undoubted provision, I've grown in my confidence. He is able and willing to be our stronghold. Walking with the Lord built spiritual muscle. And in church history too, we see anxious believers growing in courage. So both John Calvin and Charles Spurgeon, for example, confessed their natural inclination to be timid and fearful. Yet as they grew, they became gentle, lamb-like lions in the cause of the gospel. So how does it work? How can we be like that? We'll come back to Psalm 27 and verse 4. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. It is gazing upon the beauty of the Lord that changes his perspective, leading him out of worry and into singing with head held high and making melody to the Lord. It's very similar counsel to what Jesus offers in the Sermon on the Mount, in telling his disciples not to worry. He gets them to look away from their worries to the kingdom of God. Jesus says, therefore, do not be anxious saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things. And Jesus says, your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Now, in this Jesus is not distracting his disciples from their worries, like a a parent waving a toy in front of a baby when it cries. He is reorienting their perspective. Because our fears, they act like a blinding, disorienting fog. They stop us from seeing anything else. 
And so Jesus puts God and his kingdom as the sun in the sky of their perspective, both above everything and enlightening everything. And to be clear, it's not just that David sees that God is bigger than the things he fears, though there certainly is that. Do you see, it is beauty, the beauty of the Lord that changes him. It is beauty that kills the raging beast of anxiety. David goes to the temple where the glorious and gracious name of the Lord dwelt, lifting up his shining countenance upon his people. And as David wrote in Psalm 34, it is those who look to him, to his shining face, they are radiant. Seeing him, they see a right and their emptiness is filled and from being turned in on their own worries, they begin to shine with a divine radiance. And so amid all that he faces, it is that sight that lifts David's head. Now, don't misread David. This is not naive triumphalism, as if he never feels anxiety. It's something he's constantly working through. Have a look at verse 7 of our psalm. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. But you see, in his worries, David goes back to the solution he knows. Verse 8, you have said, seek my face. My heart says to you, your face, Lord, do I seek. Now, it's not easy. He then says, verse 9, hide not your face from me. Troubles beset him. Verse 10, my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. He even begs, verse 12, give me not up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they breathe out violence. Troubles remain. And so David knows he must be constant in his application of the solution. He fights fear with faith. Verse 13, I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. There we have it, friends. For that last verse is a summary of the whole psalm. Friends, in all your anxieties, wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Surrounded by enemies, David waited upon the Lord and the Lord made them stumble and fall. They fought against him. He told his sorrow to God, and God lifted his head high. Forsaken by everybody, father and mother had left him, afraid that God was about to forsake him. Still, he waited on the Lord, and the Lord takes him up. Wait, friends, that is faith, the cure for our fears. Wait on the Lord. Wait as a beggar waits for arms at the rich man's door. Wait on the Lord as Mary sat at Jesus' feet. And there, gazing upon the beauty of the Lord, your troubles and your worries will grow small. And there, you will find courage. If you want to be anxious, just pretend you're in control. Forget God. For cowardice and fear come from having to rely on yourself or on those who might fail you. But if you want to find courage, wait for the Lord. Look and look to Him. 
and his beauty will be your balm and will lift your head. For nothing can give us greater courage than a sincere love for our Lord. Courage abounds where love is found. You know, you see this in even the mildest, weakest animals that there are. How bold they are when they have to defend their little ones. Think, even a mere chicken will fight for her chicks. Love will make the most timid creature strong. And if you love Christ, you will defy all fear and you will hold your head high through all storms undergone for him. Fear him, ye saints, and you will have nothing else to fear. I wonder if you know the old story of Hercules, the strong hero of Greek myths. Once he was wrestling with a giant, Antaeus, and nothing that Hercules could do could beat him because Antaeus' mother was the earth. And every time Hercules threw him down onto the earth, Antaeus drew fresh strength from the earth, his mother. And so Antaeus would rise up again stronger than ever. Well, so it is with believers. Every time our trials knock us down, we fall back on our Father. And there we grow stronger than before. But you know, Hercules did eventually defeat Antaeus. He worked out what was going on, that Antaeus was drawing strength from the earth, his mother. So what did he do? Hercules picked him up so that he couldn't touch the earth. He held him away from the source of his strength until he was drained and defeated. And that is just how many Christians are defeated. They are kept away from waiting on the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, don't let it happen. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart in him take courage. Wait for the Lord. May God bless you all.